maker on there? It's Check on. this out. Let me show you this. All right, when you're changing thread, don't unthread your machine. Just cut your thread off. Take the thread that you're going to put on there. If you have one cone that's bigger than the other, that should be on your main feed. So take this. I know, somebody's yawning and they're like, yeah, duh. I promise you, for every dude that knows this, there's 10 that don't. Just tie this off right here. Do the same thing over here. I was on a guy's live. Um, he sews a bunch of cool stuff. And I said, hey, tell me something, teach me something. He says, I don't know what to teach you. I can tell you something I learned from you though. And I said, what's that? He said, I've been sewing for years and I never knew to just tie my thread and pull it through. So I would unthread the whole machine every time and then I would have to go and re-thread the sewing machine and it saves me a ton of time doing this. So now that these are tied, all you do is take this thread and pull it through and now you don't have to re-thread all of that sewing machine. Same thing over here, pull your bobbin. We're already tied off. Be careful when you're pulling this, when that stutters, pull it cautiously because if it stutters and you run that through your hands, it will cut you to the bone. All right. What do you think we're making? I don't even have a name for this. So you watch as I build, and then uh, towards the end, you'll probably figure out kind of what it is. We're putting this product out Thursday. Today's what, Wednesday? So Thursday, this will release on the website. You might very well see it before you see this video. Um, but we're gonna put this out, and there's gonna be a couple different ways that we put it out to the public. Um, but first, this first piece is uh, level of difficulty, uh, very easy. The next piece, not as easy, but uh, you can throw in comments if you think this is. And uh, as with the last two videos, best comment, um, I will mail this to you. Ooh. That was not supposed to happen. I don't know why that just broke that thread. Oh, here's why. Okay, check this out. See where this thread's coming down under here? This is why you put these bags on here. That thread actually wrapped under and around this, and I hadn't caught that, um, so it was down there when I started. And then as soon as all the tension came out of that, it actually snapped that thread. So, re-thread there, through the needle, through the hole, and we are back in action. We're going to go ahead and edge tape this and get that out of the way. Hit this perimeter. And bring that edge tape around this light right here. You can do a, well, I just, it's not going to work like I thought it was, but. A lot of people will set this edge tape on this right here, on this uh, prop for when you tilt the machine. Seems to work pretty well. Um, I'm gonna edge this and just cut my edge tape. You can hit 90 degree angles if you want. You can do yours however you want to. I'm gonna run it right here. And then when we're running these, we'll run you know, 20, 50 of them straight in a row. And we just use a little rope cutter. It, uh, it's amazing that we used to use a 
a Weller uh, soldering gun with a blade on it, um, or Sheffield cutters or all kinds of stuff. That rope cutter will cost you about 60 bucks. And once you use that thing, you'll be like, holy shit, this is so easy. Buy you a rope cutter. I've got one in there I'll show you if I remember. They also have a thing that somebody showed me recently. The little uh, piece you sit here is on a stand and it, it's a vacuum and it sucks it in and has a filter inside that sucks up your smoke. You'll still smell the burning webbing or elastic a little bit, but it, it works pretty well. I've got in there, I'm gonna start and stop back tack a little bit. Cut them along there. Same thing coming into the new work. I'm gonna run it forward a few stitches and back. And what that does is it just holds it in place. I'm gonna put a second line in this because I'm not on a double needle machine. But that start and stop at the end, when you go to cut this and you cut that off, it keeps that from fraying out. Um, so when your customer sees, they don't see a stitch or two hanging there and then wanna warranty the product for no reason. That's about all the edge tape work. Uh, we got another piece we're gonna edge tape later. All right, so. This I would normally do on the rope cutter or with the uh, soldering gun, but this will work right here. I'm just gonna burn that, smush it. Lighters, buy you Bic lighters. Um, you can get them from Sam's Club, you can get them all over the place. 50 packs of 50, you end up getting them for like 50, 65 cents a piece. You can buy them at Walmart in packs of five, but you still pay over a dollar for them. Um, Bic lighters, yes, you can buy cheaper lighters. The cheaper lighters are cheaper lighters. These will last twice as long as the less costly. It's actually cheaper to buy the more expensive uh, little Bic disposables. straight stuff like that and you can run a little quicker you can just put your feet they make a guide that'll screw on here that's like a plate to keep the little jig you don't need that bullshit just use your finger I'm kind of just pushing this against my finger and my fingers right in the line there like so back tack forward start and stop there While we're here, we're gonna go and burn them threads off so we don't have to do it later. There's that. Um, I know these are my handles. I know that my handle is gonna have a fold in the center. I'm gonna do that three inches on each side. I'm gonna do it three. Oh, I'm not. I need to do a lot more than three inches on each side. Twelve. We're gonna do six inches on each side. Now, when you're marking a bunch of pieces right there, you don't have to measure all these, right? Just make one master, and then put all your other pieces up against it, and just mark off of that. That'll save you a ton of time. It took me years to figure that out. I had originally made these handles. This is the fourth or fifth one of these I've made. We've been playing with it for a month or so, see how we wanted it. Um, I originally made these handles out of tubular nylon, which I like. I wanted to make them a little more robust. I was gonna put a piece of dowel or aquarium tubing, silicone tubing, uh, garden hose to give a nice grip. Um, and playing with that, I actually like these better. We went to a two inch webbing. I was gonna do a one inch. Um, I like the two inch folded in half. It just feels really good in the hand. Especially when you put heavier items in this, this just worked really, really well. Um, I wanted the appearance um, of that tubular nylon, but it was just, it was, it was a lot softer. I like this, it's a little more robust. 
and uh, this the grain in this webbing is just uh, coarser. It feels more positive in the hand. We use tubular webbing in a lot of slings. Um, I definitely wouldn't want this webbing against my neck. I would want the tubular, it's more supple. Uh, plus on our bungee slings, we have to have the tubular to fit the bungee through. I know a lot of guys will be like, I don't like bungee slings. That's okay, because we sell over a thousand of them every month. Somebody likes them. A lot of people get stuck on what they like, and that's why they have no clientele base, because they're worried about what they like and not what people want to pay for. Ooh, I'm gonna stop short there. measuring off the one on the floor over here that I built the other day. Pretty happy we made a couple little changes that made it better. All right, now these handles are gonna come off center. What did I do this at? 14, 15, 17, six and a half, I think. Eight and a half. over. One, two, three. I'm going to go ahead and fill that box in. Back tack that right there. Bring it down. Now here, because we're going to cover this, you don't actually have to do this last line here. You could just tack it right there. I'm going to go ahead and run it though. So right there. And I'm going to go ahead and connect this one. You could take the other handle and overlap it if you wanted to at this point, but I'm just going to do this right here, get this out of the way. That way I don't have two pieces hanging around, flapping around. over one, two three I'm gonna close this box right here up just that open spot ooh I fucked this up already yes I did I need the Can I get that in there? What do I have on this one? One corner. One.
loop Velcro. When you guys are starting off and you're buying full rolls of Velcro or Velcro by the yard, a lot of times you won't buy uh, six inch Velcro. You'll just use twice as much three inch. Uh, or if you don't want to stock a bunch of sizes or can't afford to, you could do it with two, right? You could use three pieces of two inch. You could totally do that. So I um, have already mess this up this should be on first under the edge tape this is going to be in the way um, but you would never know that if i didn't tell you that so i'm going to go ahead and put this together and for finish sake it'll be cleaner if you had put the velcro on first under the edge tape but function wise it'll be the same and if you're ever building your stuff with the thought that in 10 years, this Velcro might wear out. This won't because they're never going to pull this on and off enough, right? We have a very high cycle rate of Velcro. You're never going to have this Velcro fail to the point where you have to warranty it. But if it was on a mag pouch or something, for instance, where guys are in and in, out of it all the time, you might want to put the Velcro on top of the edge tape because the Velcro is what will wear out and then you don't have to un-edge tape the product to replace the Velcro if you're building it with that in mind. Most guys don't run Velcro um, as much anymore for closures on mag lids, so still probably not a concern nowadays. Now this right here, you could run a line through it, you could X your Velcro, you can do whatever you decide you want. Um, we're putting pouches in here that'll hold tools or medical or whatever you want to put in there. There's not enough pull to separate it where it has to have an X or anything through it. A lot of dudes do that because they don't trust their materials or they just don't know is why they're doing it. They saw somebody else do it or they thought it looked neat. So how am I going to get this on here and not be in the way of that handle? get this freehand. And I think the answer is of course I can. going to never did I think it was gonna do that easy. Of course it would. Of course it would. Wait, did you just test yourself? Hold, did that just happen? Hold your threads when you're starting and stop and keep them out here. That way they don't pull back in the work. You don't have a little rat nest.
Man, I amaze me. So I always, it's always a fight, like what do we add to this, right? This is actually the product right here. What do we add to it? And I think, well, we could put Velcro here. And we could put a lot of Velcro here. So you could have contrasting or printed Velcro. And I'm like, well, we could put a patch there. We could put a label there. They could take another pouch and stick on the outside in addition, right? They could take a, a little Plano tackle box and put nuts and whatever in there, sutures, right? You could put all kinds of shit in there. Um, but then we take a product and we price it to the point where it's not really in the market anymore, where you have to charge a lot more for it. Um, everything you add, you should have a price, right? If I have to add a piece of Velcro, that's $5 to the price point. But is it $5 to the price point, right? It, or does it become $10 added to the price point? Um, so those are things to keep in mind. And most dudes that are even listening to this um, that don't already know what their pricing is and why their pricing is what most guys aren't charging enough first of all um, if you had to pay yourself you how much money do you want to make right you want to you want to be a hundred thousand dollars a year guy you want to be a million dollars in your bank account a year to you personally not the business right you have to figure out what you cost per hour what can you do that brings the maximum amount to you per hour of work and what does that cost per minute and then can you duplicate that, right? Could you spend 40 hours a week getting paid that $1,000 an hour, for instance, right? If you're a $1,000 an hour guy or $100 an hour guy. And then what does that cost? Well, that's what your products have to cost. If you have some ability to make $100 an hour and you can do that 40 hours or 60 hours a week, well, then that's what that product has to also cost, right? Because that's what you are worth. And that's when you hire employees and then everything changes and your life becomes completely super complicated um, you want to have frustration hire employees you'll see what i'm talking about so you're like what the fuck is this thing what does that do okay now i'm going to show you the piece that goes with this thing and i have not built one of these in years i'm going to try to remember how i built these things um, and again i'm going to start with elimination i know that these go on here this is some nice uh, m81 woodland and we're gonna cover it up, right? So it's gonna be the same outcome. So I'm gonna cover it up on the back so that when you unzip the pouch, you see the woodland inside. You really don't have to use woodland in this. You could use coyote or black or gray or, or whatever. I would tell you to use whatever Cordura you get that costs the least, right? You pay a lot more for printed Cordura than you do for solid color Cordura. I sew better with my work on the left and the right, but I'm going to go ahead and bring this right back here. And now, boom, I'm going to travel the opposite direction and I'll have it again work on the left. No, I don't. I just cut an extra piece for a long pouch. This, so we make two sizes of these mesh pockets. We make a small and a large. And the large is twice the size of the small. And we build a lot of our bags around these. All of our bags, not all of them, but the majority of our bags have Velcro inside. You can put pals in there if you want to be the pals guy. Uh, if you're the pals guy, chances are that all your customers are going to use surplus pockets to put inside. Um, and inside a bag, you don't need, like we used to, everything had to be PALS, right? Because it'll come off, right? Prior to 
Molly or PALS or any of that shit or Keith Idema's attachment system prior to any elevated combat systems or prior to any of that, there was Velcro, right? And it was like American Body Armor and all those dudes, all those companies were Velcro. And then somebody's like, oh my God, Velcro might come off. We better put snaps. So all the armor was Velcro and it had snaps all over the place on these little square grids. So the truth is you don't, especially inside a bag, you don't need it. If you wanted to rip these out and throw this pocket to somebody, this Velcro is actually too much, right? You would take and take an opposing piece of Velcro and run two inch down here. So you're just like inch and a half, inch and a half here. So you could rip this off and throw this module to somebody or take it to the site where you're working on whatever you're working on, whether it be tools or medical or whatever. Um, you see a ton of dudes that rather than using pockets inside and they sell it to you like this, right? We don't put pockets in there, so you don't have to fit things in the pockets. We just give you a bunch of uh, grid and you can run bungee through and then you can fit it wherever you want. Let's be real. They do that because it's way less labor to do that and their laser does that shit. It's horse shit. They're trying to sell you that. It's cool, whatever. Do what you want to do. Um, but learn how to make a pocket. So I'm going to take these lips right here and I'm going to sew them on here. I'm going to sew right on this edge and it's going to look kind of nasty because it's black on this uh, tan webbing, but that's okay. I'm going to sew this first piece on right here and your zipper will stretch. So try to hold your zipper about the same tension. Work on your project as though it's two inches at a time. duplicate the same thing so I'm just gonna I need I know these are the same links so I'm just gonna start right here I just came off of that yep you can tell by the way it sounded now I'm gonna start pulling on this a little bit because I need it to fit identical on this side that if this was in tan you would never even see it you wouldn't have to pull it out you would just come back in and tie in and tack in right where you overlay it by a few stitches but black thread on tan is like a spotlight it's like a beacon and I'm gonna put a second one right here to sewing fast is control the work from here, right? So I'm guiding with my fingers where this work Just apply a little drag and it'll just kind of fall. I ran out of thread right there. I've got this real small bobbin. I'll go ahead and line this up. By small bobbin, I mean there's very little thread on this bobbin. Voila. Is it Voila or Voila? I thought it was Voila and then I watched fucking Harry Walla. Potter and it had me all fuck Harry Potter, man. Why do we even let the Brits have a fucking say? Harry Potter, that's Brits, right? I think so. I got that little weird accent. Harry Potter! You played the video game? No, I've never played. Last video game I played was a, uh, on Atari. 
No, I don't. I have I have a job. Like I have a, a real life. Okay, so this mesh, you can see it. Tell me, can you see me? It's uh, it's Rochelle or Rachel, right? This one stretches. It's got these diamonds in there. And you need to figure out which way you want your mesh to go. We cut everything the same way because of the stretch. So it won't stretch this way, but it will stretch this way. So we put Velcro on all of our mesh pockets. And the thought with the Velcro is people can put patches on there. But a fast way to label these things is you just take a piece of opposing Velcro, buy it from wherever you like to buy it. You can get it at Home Depot, you can get it at Lowe's, you can get it at a craft store, you can get it from Amazon. And you could get adhesive Velcro, which is very uh, available. You could also get non if you can find it. Um, but the thing with the Velcro is, you just put the opposing piece of Velcro on this sucker, and with a Sharpie, you can write what the contents of these are. Not that you couldn't see them, but it'll also let you put, put uh, a lot of guys make these cool ass patches that say first aid or 556 five, or whatever, right? You can get as fancy as you want from any of the places that make name tapes online. And you can have cool ass name tapes made that don't have your name. They just say whatever you want them to say. So I've got my zippers already on. I'm gonna chop that off. That one's already even. And I'm just gonna burn that, kind of sear it. Now, when we're actually building these things production-wise, we and these mesh pockets, we build 10,000 of these things at a time. Like we we build tons of these because all what I started to say earlier is all of our bags are built around these pockets. So we do a small mesh and a large mesh. And the footprint no matter what the bag is, when we're building a bag, we build it so it fits one of these, two of these, or three of these. But exponentially, the footprint goes up. You know, I think it's, I think this is five across, six across. So in the seam, it'll be about five. So we build them in fives. Now, we also do a half pouch we've started doing so that we can make them fit so the customer can kind of organize what they want. Now in the small pouch, you'll see it in a minute when we're done, but think, um, hard drives, cables, chargers, phones. In the large pouch, anything that's larger. Um, I have a large pouch in my tool bag from day one, which is 15 years ago, probably the first tool bag we made. What I find in the large pouch, I don't really have items that I need to put in the large pouch, so I put a lot of small stuff and then it's all just a jumbled. I really need to pull the large out and just put two smalls. You can also use these Velcro, and we make these with PALS on the back also, a different application obviously for PALS, but you don't have to use them to attach. When you have a bunch of PALS on the back, you can put pins, pencils, tube lights, chem lights, anything in there that you need to organize, and then you can just set this module in there and pull it out. I have some done here on the floor, I'll show you in a minute. Um, if I don't completely fuck this thing here up. I haven't made one of these in a long time. I think I got it though. So what I started to say, when we're doing these production wise, we're gonna edge tape this. If this was something that was not edge taped though, we would actually take the hot knife the soldering gun and sear across here. So not only are, do they have to get through the edge tape and the stitch, that thing's burned through. We've never have a zipper come off. We never have zipper failure. Um, when dudes are like, hey man, my zipper uh, broke. Your zipper didn't break. You did something that broke your zipper. And, it's, and usually it's, um, in the last 10 years, the only broke zippers we've seen come in is dogs have gotten a hold of it or they had it in, gear, in a room somewhere and rodents got a hold of it. Okay, so there's that. Now we're going to edge tape right across these suckers. And then we have that needle struck so it's holding the material. I can pull this back tight and make it fold perfectly in half without hooking that edge taper up. It'll be frustrating if you're learning to do this. Learn how to do it without an edge taper. I edged for years not even knowing an edge taper existed. There was no internet. There was nobody to tell me or show me.
and if somebody will let you walk in their factory, walk in their factory and look around. And if they won't let you, if it's not in your industry, that's okay. You will find things that you didn't know. The guy that knows what you need to know, he doesn't know that you need to know it. And the guy that has the info, you don't know to ask him. So you just need to walk around and have a lot of conversations. And out of all those conversations, you will get some piece of information that you need. The guy who's been sewing for two years and you've been sewing for 20, when you talk to that two-year guy, he's gonna have something that you had not thought of. You will get something from everyone. Okay. Now this here, now that I'm edged there, I'm locked in, I'm gonna go ahead and take this and I'm gonna seam this so that it is nice and clean from the outside. And right there where I hit that zipper, I'm gonna tack that in there. No, I'm not because I'm out of thread. And I wasn't holding this over here and this didn't wind, so. right here is the biggest frustration. This is the worst thing that will happen to me all day. I hope your day is that good too. Jungle juice? I love jungle juice. Do you know about creatine? I mix mine with uh, gasoline and then I create a product called Vaseline. Kerosene, gasoline, Kerosene, creatine, Vaseline, creatine, creatine. Anything with a lean. Promethazine. Doesn't have a lean, but it sounds like it, right? <laughs> Does it make you lean? Uh, it, it seems to make some of them guys lean. I've never actually seen it. I think it, it's purple, right? The yeah. other name for it is fenugrin, which is a cough syrup. I think it's the same thing. I seem to remember like as a little kid um, getting fenugrin cough syrup, but then I heard people talking about using it for um, nauseousness, I guess they use it for. The last thing I want is something that's going to slow me down. When you first moved to Tennessee, did you have allergies? I did not, and I, I, I guess I have allergies now. I'm just so used to it, you know, with all this stuff in the air all the time. Normally I hold this for a few seconds until it spins up good and breaks that tail off of there. Okay, now we're just gonna find, nope, we're still gonna, yeah, that's, I'm gonna always tack that one, tack that down.
we know that's the center, so we don't need to do that. Watch when you're doing this mesh, if it's on your table, the Sharpie will go through or whatever will. And then doing the mesh, the mesh moves so it's easy to have this come out oblong or out of shape. A lot of times I'll build a product sew it a couple times, get it working, and then give it to production with my math. And uh, they'll be like, hey, we want to add a half inch here or a quarter inch on this edge. Um, and they'll sew them, hundreds, thousands of them, whatever, and they'll come out perfect. But when I take the patterns they've been using and I sew them, I just have different stretch or, you know, whatever. And mine will come out not uh, clocked perfectly. Like, it'll just come out out of shape. So... If, when you're learning to do perimeters or circles or rectangles like this, um, an easy or an easier way to learn to do it is sew the top and the bottom or the sides first. And then wherever you're stretch, if you're too short or too long, you can make little tiny pleats and they'll be identical on both sides. We'll see here in a second probably what it is I'm telling you about because it'll probably happen here. And you can also do it in quarters, right? Like, so I sewed from about the center over, and then you can do the same thing. You could flip this work and do the other side, but I'm just gonna put this right here. Is this? going to come together and because it's the mesh right it'll stretch so it looks pretty good I can kind of pull on it and it'll come right into place so it's a little puckered up but I can just pull this here equal right top and bottom pull equally hold that in place and then again half that right so sew it from the center And when you're doing the mesh like this, when you cut it, you might want to allow maybe a quarter inch around because if you get too close to the edge of the mesh, it'll actually break through those boxes or diamonds or whatever. So I'm going to tack this in, but I'll actually come back once it's all in place where I want it and I'll sew a line um, about an eighth inch inside just so that that can never rip out of there and my pocket is always intact. Zoom in close right here, we'll show them what we're talking about. I feel like I have something on there. Like right there, where it shifted a little bit. While it's sewn down, the possibility that that could unravel from there exists. So I'm just gonna bring another line right inside that one. And now we'll never have a warranty issue on this pocket. And you can edge tape these too. You could edge them, conceal all that, which will help Keep that mesh also from unraveling and then my zippers I'm gonna push them back um, always have your zippers out of the way even if you think you can just work around them or I'll move them um, these machines and this is only this is just a console 206 my bigger jukies in there they will run a needle right through these things and usually you'll be surprised that it will sew a couple stitches right through that and it, oftentimes it won't mess up your machine, but sometimes it will mess up your machine. So just keep that out of the way. She said, no, 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 you cannot get this. But one day he got this.
Yeah, mine looks really weird. Super, super stretched out. Does not, this does not look like this. I don't know why. Cause I sewed, I sewed the mesh on top instead of the quarter on top. Yeah, mine uh, does not look like that, but we'll go ahead and put it the rest of the way together. Weird, I don't know why it's like this. And really, if you're building something like this, you will really find that if you just round your corners instead of making it completely square, um, something good to use to round your corners is just take a spool, set it on there, and just round your corners. Um, you'll have to cut a little bit out of this pattern for the allowance of it, but you will find that it is way easier to put it together, and your zippers also won't have to make that 90 degree turn, so your pocket will actually open um, considerably easier. It won't stutter on that sharp corner in the, uh, you get to open that. I'm getting completely that Velcro on the inside. Usually we take a piece of Velcro and stick it and then these two aren't touching on each other. England, baby. You don't really listen to rap music, do you? What do you have? Skater punk? Is that what you do? Yeah. Like what kind of music is it you do? What genre? Horror punk. Horror punk. Same thing. Same thing. It's the exact same thing. Damn Velcro, man. <laughs> I just I don't want to get up and go grab another piece. I'm almost done here. If I stuck another opposing piece there, it wouldn't. It'd be dead, right? It wouldn't grab. Yeah. I wouldn't have to fight it. Okay, when you're learning to do these, I would just sew everything, but I wouldn't even tack it on the perimeters. I would just sew it in, turn it inside out, make sure it's where you want it. Once you verify that it is clocked, so it's not so it's clocked to the same right it's not cattywampus um then you can go back and sew a second or even third line in it if you choose to if it's production stuff i would definitely get a second line in it um, we sewed a ton of our samples like stuff we built for ourselves and then used for a while uh, we sewed all of our stuff single line none of our production stuff is single um, but all of our single layer stuff, we never had failures on any of it. Okay, mine looks completely not at all like all these other ones we built. So I don't know what the fuck happened here. Um, but what we're after is this. And you can see there is 
some difference there. What that difference is, I don't know. And what we built, what we built is this right here. This is what we're after. So what we built is this piece here. And what this will hold is whatever you want, anything Velcro. But two small mesh pockets will fit right here. And one large mesh pocket will fit here. Now these, you could put four smalls, two larges. Uh, the way we're shipping these is two small, one large. Um, I think we're going to actually build some half long pouches so that you can organize, I think, like wrenches and screwdrivers in the um, short longs, the not as tall longs. Um, to give you an idea, these pouches right here, we built these for the SEAL teams. They were getting issued bags. They were pulling the guts out, and that's how these pockets came to be. Uh, we were building these, um, 200 of these and 100 of these, and they were getting uh, four per set and two per set. And what these hold, these hold 500 IV bags perfectly, and these hold 1,000 IV bags. You can put two 1,000 bags here, you can put one 500 per. Now you can put all your bandages and whatever in there. You can organize, they literally, you can use them for anything. Um, but that is the, I guess we're gonna call it a bifold tool port. I don't know what we're gonna fucking call it. You, you got any ideas? Tell us what we should call this thing. But there's that. Um, I forgot to put on these pieces, which are just, pieces of inch and a half web and what this allows you to do is you can stage this depending how full this bag is with your internal pouches and you can have this clip right so you can have this so if it's flat you can pull all the slack out and have the buckle right on that side um, but if you were to overstuff this thing you could have the buckle on the top um, and what else fits in here perfectly which we'll show you up front when we walk up front um, your Plano little tackle boxes for all your lures and stuff, they make several sizes. They make a piece where you can put three smalls across, they make one where you can put two, or they make one that's about the size of this footprint. You could put adhesive Velcro on the back of those boxes, put fasteners, put, you could use it for fishing, you could use it for whatever you want to use it for. But there is that. I guess um, we will go ahead and finish this one because this will actually be the uh, production sample um, as to how I, so this will go to the sew floor and this will be what they use to duplicate. I do want these to be right here. Whereas my other one was lower. That's the final change was just raising these. These are raw um, edges right here. We will actually probably add a half inch into this, the length of this webbing here. And what that'll do is we will fold this over to conceal the raw edge so that the scab never gets knocked off of that. Because if the scab gets knocked off, then they're able to pull the fibers out. And if they see the fibers, they'll think it's falling apart and then they'll want to warranty it. And they'll send it back to you and then you'll sew it and you'll pay $14 to ship it back to them, right? Because your warranty failed. The simple fix is just to make this piece half inch longer and then fold those edges under. Your product, you do whatever you want to do with it. And then when you go to fold your edges under, you can pre-sew that if you want. It's probably easier to make the, the fold bigger, so you might want to add more meat into your cut list, right? Just comes down to pennies, right? And what you'll see when you start doing this, especially for a business, all your materials are expensive. And your, your materials are expensive right now when your labor's not because you feel like your skill is not good enough to charge more. When you're charging the proper amount, it is much less costly to add a few dollars into the material because it saves you so much on your labor. So right now you're trying to make every, like there's dudes buying webbing 
you know, a few feet or a yard at a time. These actually come on, you know, 25, 50 or 100 yard rolls. A roll of webbing, one inch webbing, for instance, cost should be about $32. Not the printed webbing, but your solid colors, $32. When you're starting out, everything costs a lot, but it'll be way cheaper if you're building 100 of these to add an inch in so that you can make your seam a half inch, you know, half hair, half here, so one inch times 100, right? So that's 200 inches, half inch, no, that's 50 inches. But then there's two, right, so 100 inches. That 100 inches of material that you're gonna put on there is way cheaper than the time it's gonna take you to make a small hem, right? So you'll, you'll figure it out. You Half of you are like, what the hell did he just say? People are always stepping over dollars to pick up dimes. The most expensive thing in your shop should be you. It's just like this buckle right here, putting this buckle on, right? This is gonna go under. You could sew it just like this, nobody would ever see it. Or, you could fold it under, just like this. It's just attention to detail. The more detail you have, get in the habit of doing minute difficult things and they become easy and the more detail you have the more valuable your product is these folds you can save a little bit of money make a small fold you can spend a penny more and make a bigger fold. The bigger fold can be grabbed with gloves on. It can also be grabbed when it's really cold and there's not as much dexterity. Did I just, no, I'm just putting it on backwards. I thought I sewed that to the wrong side. why we cut those zipper pulls off. So I actually added an inch into this pattern. You would never know that if I didn't tell you. I did that so that when you overstuff these, it gives it more of a footprint and it doesn't pull. Um, it'll close a lot smoother and it also lets you put fatter things in here. These pockets also work if you wanted to use this for tools, all your 12 volt Milwaukee or DeWalt stuff is much more compact. You can put that driver uh, in there with a battery in it and stick another battery in it. Um, but that's it right there. This is what I had in mind. With this, it kind of free floats. You can pull this buckle to where you want it, lock it down. And with that, you can run this up under this so that tail doesn't look all silly. Um, but having it long, it allows you to overstuff this. You could even put a driver or a sawzall in there and carry it around, whatever you want. Um, that's just thinking tools, right? But you could, you're limited only by your imagination. You could use it for art supplies, you could use it for medical, you could use it for to toiletries, whatever you want to use it for. The more story that you weave for your customer, the more valuable this will become to them. And you will also pick up customers when they see this, they think tactical gear, but if you're using the hashtags and you fill it up with, I don't know, popcorn and you take it to the movie theater, whatever, right? You just have to, there's a customer for every product. You just have to connect your product with your customer. 
there's a lot of dudes making super rad stuff that is geared towards like bicycles. If you show that to other places, you will have an enormous influx of customers. You just have to plant the seed in your customer's head. That's it. If you like these videos, leave us some comments. Um, coolest comment in this thread, I will send this to you, uh, just like the last one. And uh, we got a bunch of content. Well, some guys, I know a lot of guys watch just these sewing videos. There's over 4,000 videos on YouTube. Um, from the day we bought the building to the complete build out of the building and everything we did here, the motocross track, all the stuff. Um, there's videos of all of that shit. There's business development videos, how to deal with customers, how to do marketing, advertising. Um, we've got a private group. We actually have several private groups um, for different aspects of things. And I do a live video at nine o'clock. You can talk to the dude that started this company 35, like I've run this company for 35 years. Um, I ain't the smartest dude for sure, but I have a business longer than most of these dudes watching this video have even been alive. So I know a couple things and I know the very hard way to do it and you guys have nothing but the easy way now. And if I could do it as the hard way, there's something you could learn. Um, and you have, you guys all have something that I could learn from you also. So I don't care what you do. I don't care that you're competition. I don't see you as competition. I wanna be friends with you guys. I have enough dudes that don't like us that consider us competition let me help you i don't want anything for it nothing we do these videos for free so jump in nine o'clock this youtube channel we can have a conversation about whatever you want to talk about i do it almost every single night you guys have a great day have a great week and a lot of times you having a good day it's just a choice man no matter what happens to you it is literally just a choice i'm telling you no matter what bad shit you have happening in your life you could live a couple days of my life and you would have ended yours. You can do this no matter what it is. It is literally just a decision. Look at it like a light switch. Good day, bad day. You guys have a great day. People be trying to sign checks with my name. Wouldn't they be surprised I don't write checks? <laughs>